when you look at it from the road out here, it just looks like a driveway with no house. This is the only earth sheltered home in the city of Omaha. The city of Omaha, they really don't want, they want these houses built out rural. They don't necessarily want them in town. We were driving by one day and we saw that it was for sale. It was actually very cold out the first day we went in there. Because we're completely underground, the entire house is geothermal, so they didn't have to worry about freezing pipes or anything like that. That was the first time we really got introduced to the thermal efficiencies of the house. And one of the interesting things about living underground is our internal air only fluctuates 10 degrees year round. So we won't go below 64, we really don't go above 74, that's it. And we usually have three months of just, I mean, it can be brutal cold in Omaha. And here's probably the biggest thing that I can convey about this house, the outside temperature does not dictate our temperature inside, the ground does. Since we've been here, it's never been below 64. And 74 is about the top end. So 10 degrees is it, that's it. This is approximately five feet of soil to the top of the house. So there's hundreds of thousands of tons of weight on top of the house. And at its deepest point, we're 15 feet underground. But we had some engineers uh, come in and they said the house is actually stronger with the weight on the house. Because of the way it was designed, it's designed to have all that weight. Where we're at right now, this was a 30-foot pit. This entire area was nothing but a huge pit and they trucked special soil in and they would pack it about every four to six months with packers and they kept doing this and then they finally had the soil testing lab come in and do impact testing to make sure that the ground was where they wanted it to put this concrete structure on it. So there's three domes. There's one dome here, another dome here, and then a third dome that has two levels. So domes are actually very strong. That's why they build them because it distributes that weight out onto the pilings. And we actually have a picture of a tandem twin screw cement truck on top of the house. And that's about 100,000 pounds of concrete on top of the house. So you'll notice there's no lines coming to the house. There's no above ground lines anywhere. There's no power, there's no communications, there's no phone lines. It's all buried. So there's no lines. They all go to this tempering chamber and then the tempering chamber drops down to the top of the house and so the chimneys, the utilities, everything is below grade. So you never have to worry about, and Lloyd even had double lines ran. He was afraid that a line would get cut and they would have to trench, so he ran double lines of almost everything. So this white pipe that's on top of the tempering chamber, that's for the radon system. We have a commercial radon system that's always running. And it's just a naturally occurring gas? Yep, yep, it's a naturally occurring, occurring gas. And we can actually take in radon from any, uh, from the walls, from the, from the ground, and because we're completely underground. And so that's why we have a commercial system in it. It creates a vacuum underneath the property. And if there's any radon gas that would come up, then it's going to follow the path of least resistance and get evacuated by the radon system. We have two chimneys. One is for air inlet and one is air outlet. This system has a 10 inch exit and it's got a six inch input. And so the it doesn't use any of the house's air to produce heat. And we even have a huge heat exchanger that we get 300 degree heat from the fireplace that gets pushed through the entire house. So the house is pointing solar south, uh, not magnetic south. And so solar south is the average between the summertime solstice and the wintertime solstice. And what this does is it gives us more sunlight in the wintertime and less sunlight in the summertime. Because we get a lot of thermal gain coming from the front glass, that's just another thing that they like to do with earth sheltered homes. Okay. So you're, oh, this wow. is the beginning of the house. No. 
So this is the garden area. We usually have a lot of plants in here in the wintertime. As you can see, the phone is on the ledge there. There's no cell service past about right here. It's just no penetration whatsoever on the cell signal. So these come down at night. So, you know, when it does, when it does storm out and Omaha is in Tornado Alley, if there's ever any debris or anything like that that we have to deal with. But we really don't worry about it too much. With all the natural light coming in, we don't really ever get the sense necessarily that we're underground. And the other reason for these domes is the natural light comes in and refracts inside the dome. So, you know, you've got a large air mass, so it's not very confining. The other thing you'll notice is it's very quiet in here. Living underground, it is a natural sound dampening environment. This is actually a pretty busy road out here. And uh, we just really don't hear much out there. It feels sort of cocooned in here. Yeah, a little bit, a <laughs> yeah. little bit. This is all low moisture concrete. When concrete has a lot of moisture in it, when that moisture evaporates, you've got a honeycomb of concrete. And so by design, they wanted low moisture concrete. In fact, it's 40% or less. There's pretty extensive electrical. Of course, you're not gonna put more electrical in this house. It's in concrete. We can pull wires and we can replace them, but you're gonna need a hammer drill to do anything new. And so this is uh, the second garden area. This plant is approximately 60 years old. So this is the master bedroom. Now, if I want it to be extremely dark, I can make it very dark. Uh, these panels actually slide, o slide out and, and go across, and that's how we get privacy. Otherwise, uh, we, we want to use as much of the natural light as we can. These are pocket doors. Now, this is the bedroom. It is see-through. But he just has a curtain that comes across, so, um, yeah. These are actually the plans. It's called a Terra Dome, but this is the Terra Dome, and this is how the domes were built. These are, this is all the rebar that's in the domes. Double meshes of rebar. Yep, 10 years he worked on the house. It was, you know, and they didn't have as much machinery back then. I mean, it was a lot of hard labor. I mean, you had to work, work the concrete and you had to love what you were doing. I mean, because it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> we do have an upstairs, which is kind of rare when it, with earth sheltered homes. These stairs are very strange to go up because it goes up like a stair stepper. This is one of the crane points that they use to crane the domes up on top here. This is also one of the stacks. So if we ever wanted to go up to the surface, we'd use this as a vent. So this is called the bat cave. These white pipes are the radon pipes that go down into what's normally considered a sand point. And it provides this low pressure region uh, because what it does is it communicates under the entire house. And so if there's ever any radon, it's gonna follow that low pressure and get vented right up. This is the furnace for a 4,000 square foot house. It's not very big. <laughs> we've even had, in some years, we've had calls from the gas company wanting to know if everything's okay. <laughs> We're not using any gas. <laughs> So living underground, it's naturally cooler by a couple of degrees. Now that's something that Becky and I loved. We like it just a little bit cooler. I sleep better. So there's a cal rod system that's in this ceiling as well as everything above the bed is heated. And what it is, it's a radiant heating system. So this, this entire area will warm up and if you're under it, you're, you're not hot, you're just not cold. Do you think that this should, could be replicated more? Is yeah. So this is the only earth sheltered home and it's one of the only apex style or completely underground earth homes 
in a pretty good radius. And then there's some berm style houses as well. And a berm style house is identical to this, except for it's not underground. So this is one of the most expensive ways to go because it's completely underground. But if you can form a house and bury it up to the top of the walls on all sides and then just have the, the roof sticking out, you really get a lot of the thermal benefits without all that added expense of the concrete and just the engineering. Berm houses, you get about 70 to 80 percent of the benefit and you slash about a third to half of the cost. The, the financing part of it is, it has a hard time with an underground house. We were completely pre-qualified to buy this house. And when we arrived at the price and went to the bank, the bank said, what, it's underground? We can't do that, it's a non-conforming structure and they have challenges with an underground house. And the biggest reason is there's no comparable. So when they assess the value of this house, they have to assess it against houses in the area. Well, there's no house in the area you can assess this against. So our appraisal is that thick. And we have a geodesic dome, we have a log cabin, we have two above ground houses, and one earth home in Manly, Nebraska is on our appraisal. So fortunately, we went to a smaller bank. The president of the bank came through the house and said, give him a loan. And they've kept our loan ever since.